Now, why was that so painful? Why was that 60 seconds the most uncomfortable part of your day? See, I think it's because society tells us to avoid silence. And we're conditioned to think that something's wrong with the quiet. <laughs> okay, I, I can't take it anymore. What's in the bag? You really want to know? Yes. <laughs> okay, I know it's a little late, uh -huh. but happy graduation, babe. Oh my gosh. That looks amazing. Did you make this? I made the decision to buy it. Okay, just think about living here. Would you get lonely? I mean, there are times where you'd want to go here for a vacation or an escape, but the idea of living here routinely, day to day, if I'm being honest with myself, I don't. Ah, that must be Hunter. Well, patience is his best quality, so obviously he's a piece of shit. I mean, what the fuck? You're just gonna let yourself in, huh? Yes, and you're welcome for me being here. What else would you be doing? I'm getting laid. But, is too much silence a bad thing? Are the mundane relationships that we keep the only things weaving us to sanity? Are you sure this is okay? I mean, I know I said we'd go out to celebrate. What? Are you kidding? Look at this. Okay, this is perfect. Just us, that's okay? So, are you able to meet with my cousin next week? Um, no. Why not? There's a position open and she wants to interview you. I mean, we could maybe get you out of your parents' house? <laughs> um, I'm busy next week. The whole week? You're just busy? Yeah. Okay, mystery man, what are you busy with? Well, it's a surprise. Like a good surprise? Well. I think it's a good surprise. For you, it's like a like a surprise car crash. Hey. Ah, yeah, she's a little mad at me. Hey, Dad. Hey, Sam. Hey, can I interview you? Sure, what about? Um, just like your job and, you know, your career. Yeah, maybe later. Some of the best art in the world was created in the darkest hours of those artists' lives. And I'm talking about the whole artistic spectrum, okay? Poets, musicians, filmmakers, painters, novelists, anyone who creates. And the thing is, those, those artists happily shared it because they... I don't know, they had to. Michaela. Michaela! Kurt Cobain, Van Gogh, Edgar Allan Poe, they've all found masterpieces through insanity. Well, I mean, I think it's a waste of time, but then also, I think it's kind of fucking dumb. Wow, okay. I mean, clearly, you're going through a quarter-life crisis, so no, that's fine. Anyways, back to the interview. You've spent the last three months growing a depression beard. This isn't a depression that beard. That is a depression beard, and you know it. You were three days away from a straight-up homeless beard. Okay, cool, man. Thanks thanks so much for coming out. You know what? I'm being a good friend, and good friends tell the fucking truth. Ernest Hemingway said that terrible mood of depression, of whether it's any good or not, is known as the artist's reward. I'll be honest with you, I haven't taken anything seriously in a very long time. It's time I do. So the plan to create loneliness. Michaela's gonna drop me off deep in the Georgia mountains. No town whatsoever for 20 miles. No car, no phone, no GPS. Just me alone in the woods with my thoughts for five days. You know, look at me, man. I did it. Yeah. I did the sellout thing that you're talking about. It got me two weeks paid vacation, benefits, and you know, I get to pretend I'm good at golf every once in a while. It's not bad. Wow. No, I'm sorry. It, I, there's so much to look forward to when you put it like that. You know that. what I think your fucking problem is? Is that I think you've seen too many movies with manic pixie dream girls in them. 
Okay? What? You know what I'm talking about. Yeah. It's just these girls who are just like, just find your passion. It's exactly what you sound like. Okay? Just find your passion. And then once you've found that passion, just hug it. Okay? And then that hug will, will, will bloom into happiness and joy. And you'll just come back from the dead and start just loving life. Oh, you're done. Thank God. You're uh-huh. done. Okay. Manic pixie dream girls aren't real. Let's just, let's just do the thing that I invited you over here to help me with, okay? Can we just do that? Please. Where were we? Where were we? We were at finding your passion and hugging it. <clears throat> All right, so Hunter. Yes? Tell me about your best friend, Clayton. <laughs> Oh, man, he is the clumsiest person in the world. I mean, he's clumsy, but I wouldn't say he's the clumsiest person in the world. No, it's true. Anyone clumsier than Clayton is dead. Let's see, what else? God, it's, just, it's gonna be so good. Um, I mean, he's he is really smart, but you can't call him bright. Um, one time, he ate gas station sushi. Okay. He likes baths better than showers. Okay, I mean things pertaining to this experiment, not weird shit you know about each other. <laughs> uh, in high school... He would make study guides uh, at finals time for all the students, Um, but he would spend so much time making these study guides to sell them that he wouldn't spend any time actually studying, and then he would fail himself. Um, (laughs) But, you know, I mean, he'd always come off with like a thousand bucks or so um, for Christmas or summer break or whatever. Um, That's just the first thing that comes to me. No, that's, that's good. Can I just say one more thing? Oh my God. So what? God, you just graduated. You don't know what you're going to do with your life. Welcome to everybody's thought process that's ever graduated. You're just scared. First time in your life, you don't have everything planned out for you. Yes, thank you. It's finally been said, okay? I think you're fine, and we can continue now, but I think you're fine. Okay. Thank you. All right, so what's the first fucking question? (laughs) Um, I don't know. I don't know. That's it. There's like a whole foot. I know. Hunter, are you on a wide enough lens to capture all of your hatred? Got it. Oh, good. We can continue now. All right. Good afternoon, Michaela and Clayton. It's the eve of your solo camping trip. And how are we feeling this afternoon? Stop. Take it back. How are you feeling? Excited. uh, A little nervous. And what about you, Michaela? Annoyed. Frustrated. Upset. Angry. Confused. Just just all the negative words in the English language. En colère. It's French for something mean. Hunter, how, how did I describe how she is treating me the other day? Uh, it, was, it was a metaphor. Uh, uh. No, no, I'd love to hear this metaphor. No, I wouldn't do it. No, don't, please, don't, I would. Don't. I'd love to hear don't. it. Don't. You're treating me like I am running over your dog while I'm stabbing your family to death while simultaneously banging your best friend. So? We can start the interview now. Okay. Um, uh, why, Michaela, uh, why on your best, I mean, to your uh, understanding, to your best understanding, is he doing this? What? Like, why is his inspiration to do this? Or or what? Dude, you're going to have to work on your interviewing voice. And, and your dyslexia. Like, I straight up wrote the question. Just read it off the card. Stop, he's helping you. Thank you. No, no, no. Right now, it feels like I'm helping him by giving him a fucking reading lesson. Clayton! (laughs) No, that was good. Uh, You mentioned that story from high school earlier? Yeah, yeah. Um, In 10th grade, our teacher, um, she made us write these uh, plays, you know, these short plays. And Clayton decides to write this crazy story about uh, a mythical land with this king and queen and uh, it's like a bunch of bullshit but the queen gets kidnapped by the enemy king of another land so the queen's name was syphilis (laughs) okay 
So, I mean, just imagine this, this, you know, class full of immature high schoolers just on the floor. The teacher gives him an F. She said it was well written, but the material was inappropriate. I don't know. I think that story really sums up both sides of Clayton. Michaela, I'm going to be fine, okay? I mean, I'm pretty sure if Tom Hanks did it for five years, then I can do it for five days. Tom Hanks? Yeah, he did it in Castaway. That's a movie. Tom Hanks isn't real. No, Tom Hanks is definitely real. Okay, it's not you just going out into the woods that bothers me. What bothers me is the fact that you're disconnecting from literally everything. No car, no phone. I mean, what if you get hurt? What uh, if you get attacked no. by a bear or someone robs you? No, I mean, no, I don't know. No, who's no, out none there. of that's going to happen. I'm going to feel alone. That's it. I'm going to learn things about myself and the process. I'm going to come back with a great story. That That's it. Michaela. Michaela. Oh, that was awkward. Oh, what are you gonna do? Side with her now? So, this is it. Last thoughts before I head up. Um, I'm a little nervous, but this is my chance. This is my chance to harness some sort of storm and once evolved, share it. headed up to the mountains. Michaela's psyched. You can tell by the vein in her forehead how excited she is. Clayton, it's way too early. I, w I want you to look into this camera and say one positive thing. It can be anything. Hey, it's pretty cool that the sun rose this morning. It's awesome that we're both currently not on fire, because that would suck. You know, I could just turn around. No, no. That's... We're good. I just wanted to be said, though, ahead of time, that I'm gonna come back with this dissertation on life. You know, this life dissertation. And you're gonna apologize. Prediction submitted. There it is. Can we please just not talk about the trip anymore? I'm sure Christopher Columbus's girlfriend wasn't happy whenever he went on the boat to America. Yeah, that's the same. She was literally like, you're gonna fall off Earth. She probably wasn't as mean to him. You win. Turn the car around, I'll find a different means for creative inspiration involving black tar heroin and alley syringes. Oh my God, Clayton. Jokes that do not land. Starring Clayton Thompson. Written, directed, and produced by Clayton Thompson. Jokes that do not land. I fucking love that show. I watch it every day. This is so ridiculous. Look at him. Not a care in the damn world. Hey, let's play a game called What Decade Is It? Excuse me, ma'am. Where's the nearest rollerblade store? The fact that you one day woke up without a sense of humor kind of bothers me. Well, you know, actually, I'm storing up every stupid thing you say in my head so I can laugh at it later. You know, just so I won't give you the satisfaction. Oh. That's the best news I've heard in a long time. Oh, well, I'm a sick person. <laughs> um, can you just put the camera down? Let's just talk. But did you? Did you ever play? Um, 
I played t-ball, but I got kicked off the team. You got kicked off your t-ball team? Yes. Wait, t-ball like when you're five? Yes, it's not funny. Give me a thousand years of guesses. I'd have no idea. I, like, how does somebody get kicked off <laughs> Okay, all right, I'll, I'll explain. So every week the teammates would take turns bringing snacks for after the game. Uh-huh. And when it was my week, my mom made these boss chocolate and peanut butter cupcakes. <laughs> Anyways, there's this one girl who never threw me the ball, was always kind of rude to me, and she refused to eat my mom's cupcakes, <laughs> which is unacceptable. So I got sick of it one day and smashed a cupcake in her face. And uh, then she went to the hospital. What? Turns out she was severely allergic to peanuts. <laughs> so uh, yeah, that traumatizing event ended my baseball career. Why did you never tell me that? Well, I tend to skip stories where I almost kill a five-year-old child. <laughs> <laughs> so, what is this place exactly? Uh, I don't know. Just some patch of land between two mountains. Nothing's there, though. That's all I know. This is it. You sure? Yeah, better place than any. Well, we really are out in the middle of nowhere. Good. I hope I remember how to get back here. No, that's not funny. Okay, you use your phone and you drop a pen. <sighs> Baby, you know I lose things all the time. Wow, no, it didn't get any funnier that time. Well, you know, what if I die? And no one's here to come get you in six days. An 18-wheeler just runs me off the road and bam! No more Michaela. No one to come get you. That was dark. Yeah, and you know, I actually didn't even need a lone camping trip for that one. It just sort of came to me. <laughs> well played. Hey, I'm gonna meet with your cousin when I get back. Look, I know you don't want to be a corporate vlogger. Yeah, but I still want to meet with her. Well, I mean, there's no harm in trying. Yeah, exactly. I'm sorry, I've seemed like such a bitch lately. It's just... Yeah, it's because I love you, right? Of course, yeah. trees down. I guess this will do. I'll lead you in. I 
Michaela. Okay, turn this way. You're not gonna kill me, are you? <laughs> no. Here, okay. hang on, let me get this up. All right. Okay, I'm gonna be fine. What, what will fix this? Nothing. No. Don't say nothing, okay? What will fix this? It's not like that. When I am done with this whole project, okay, I, I will spend time in church, I will watch Full okay, House. Okay, stop, stop. I don't need your sarcasm right now, okay? Just, just let me feel how I feel. Okay. Okay, I just want you to be real for a moment. Oh, what? What do you want? Okay, what do you want out of this? I want us. You're gonna have to explain that to me. I just said it, I want us. Look, I'm not even using the misogynist answer of you. I want us. That doesn't even make sense, okay? Because as far as I am concerned, you have us. So, I want to know what you actually mean when you say you want us. It means I want us, okay? I am not willing to give you some dispassionate version of that person, okay? Some detached guy who gave up on every single dream straight out of the gate. I'm not going to do that. You deserve better. Give me the camera. Give me what? the camera. What? Give Why? me the camera. Okay, Clayton, I'm gonna ask you one more time, all right? What do you want? What is the driving force behind this? What is bothering you so much that you feel like you have to do this, okay? Just say it. My dad feels stuck at his job. He doesn't say it but he doesn't have to. I'm not gonna be that way. You love your dad, don't talk shit about him, okay? I love him, I don't respect him, there is a difference. Your father works a job he hates so he can provide for his family. How is he not a fucking superhero? You just, you don't understand. So what are you gonna do now? I've already told you, I'm here, you've seen this thing. I'm going to write a story. I'm gonna make a novel, I'm gonna write it. I'm gonna make you proud. You are going to be proud of me. I am proud. I know how you're feeling, Clayton. All right, you want, you want to be great. Everyone does. Put the camera down. No, no. You want to be great, okay? You're gonna to listen to me. You see people post things online. Happy, but they're only posting the highlight reels. But you look at them, and you think you're not good enough. What the hell? You are. You are good enough. Watch this in a couple days and see if you believe yourself. Come here. Come here. I love you more than the nostalgic memory of a blockbuster video. I love you more than peanut butter and chocolate. No, that's impossible. Don't say something you can't take back. It's true. I do. I do. Goodbye. Bye. I'll see you in a couple days.
Michaela? So this is it. This is where I'll find myself. Spend all my graduation money buying a camera, batteries, and cards. I'm a fucking idiot. First night. It's not so bad out here. Just quiet. Besides the cicadas, it's quiet. I can actually hear myself think. Don't love it, but I can. It's definitely creepy out here. But I have to ask the question. Would having someone with me make it any less dangerous? And the answer is no. But it takes being alone to realize you're afraid. Hello? Is anyone there? So, I survived the first night. Uh, I just ate breakfast, a granola bar, which will also be dinner. Let me say one thing. This is not the body of a man who eats two granola bars a day. This is the body of a man who eats a granola box a snack. So, thoughts on last night. Uh, one thing that comes to mind, one word would be aware. I was aware of every sound that was around me. Uh, the trees blowing in the wind, the leaves skipping on the ground. Uh, everything was so crisp. Honestly, it was amazing. Well, I am bored as shit. Look what I found. Bottom of the seventh, two outs. Two strikes, no balls, man on second and third. And the pitch. Oh, it's hit a mile high and three miles long. Yes, it could go all the way. Upper decker home run. And that pitch will send Clayton into a month long binge of depression, alcoholism, and self loathing. Lumberjacking in the forest. That is not happening. Oh, C come on! These trees are monotonous. Be hell to get lost in it. But I don't know, it's somehow not as scary in the daytime. It reminds me of whenever I was a little kid and I just ran out into the forest, making up stories along the way, living my own little journey. Oftentimes being chased by something. A ninja. Like all the time, actually. I don't know what the hell that's about. I can make that jump, right? Night's coming, soon enough. Oh, if you guys could smell me right now. There, there are no words. I used to be like, bullshit, there's a word for everything. Nope, not this smell. 
smells like two dead animals crawled inside of three dead animals just to shit and then die. It's night two. Uh, it's late, real late. Um, heard a lot of noises tonight. It's the longest I've ever gone without seeing someone. I mean, sure. I've had those days where I disappear into a sofa and binge watch 12 hours of TV while screening all my calls. I call those dark days, but I also call them everything I've ever wanted days. So new observation, there's a fine line between delight and depression. I don't know though, this is just different. there. Nothing's there. Hello? Are you kidding me, Michaela? Are you kidding me? No, no, this is not cool. This is not cool. Yes, I'm fine. You have to quit worrying. What, when, when? No, I will not calm down, okay? Okay, I will not calm down. No, do not assume the worst whenever you call back, okay? Because this phone is gonna be in pieces on the dirt. <sighs> My heartbeat hasn't slowed. So Michaela snuck in a burner phone into my bag whenever I was gassing up. She also left this. Some sort of memory card with something to play. Anyway, cheap scare of the night. Moving on. I keep hearing those noises though. Sounds like footsteps. I have this theory about pushing the limit of sleeplessness. And it goes like this. When you stay awake longer than you're used to, your brain, being such a powerful and mysterious thing that it is, it becomes aware that you're tired. And the brain, being the powerful and mysterious thing that it is, it compensates. What I've found is it overcompensates, creating some sort of a heightened creative state. So I might just stay up writing all night. Well, I, <sighs> I won't bore you with this. Hello? Hello, is anyone there? I just didn't see it. It was big. It was... You always feel like you're being followed in the woods. You never are. It's just paranoia in the night.
Nothing's been touched. A uh, couple weeks ago, I had a dream. Uh, and in this dream, I was writing the short story about this character that was going crazy because of this dark, shadowy entity that wouldn't leave him alone. And I'm laying on my stomach on the sofa, typing on my laptop, and then I fell asleep. And that's when it happened. I woke up to something slowly pulling me. And the second that I became aware of what it was, it yanked me off the sofa. And I flew upright and I was levitating. My feet were off the ground and I was frozen. And I tried to scream, but the second I tried, the most unbelievably tight grip came around my throat. And it all went blurry. And then I woke up. I woke up in the exact same place I had fallen asleep. If immersing myself in this terrifying world can affect me that much, down deep, there is a story waiting to be found. Kind of scared to fall asleep now. I was hoping you could keep me company, though. What was it? My mom used to quote this verse in Joshua something. Be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened. Do not be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Everything's going to be fine. I know that. I know it. Everything's fine. My uncle he used to say that if you live close enough to people where you can't scream at the end of a bad day without getting in trouble, then you live too close to people. My uncle is a fucking liar. So, the sun is offensively bright in the morning. It's like a big old fuck you from nature. But I survived night two. Yay! Being out here, I've really gotten to recall some memories I'm pretty sure I would have forgotten. Once again, it comes back to this idea that I, I can't shake, that we're just surrounded by so much noise and we don't get the time to even exercise these great memories. Anyway, the last couple hours, I've been thinking about some of the funniest stories of my life. Kind of makes me wish I had journaled more. I've had too good of a life not to. One story, uh, though. Um, it was the first camping trip that we had ever taken. We went camping, and we went on this drunk hike through the forest. And we ended up on this gravel road. Not a car, not a sound for miles. And then all of a sudden, Hunter said it. He said, guys, guys, turn off your lights, turn off your lights. So we did. We all ducked down on the gravel road. We were, we were scared. And we said, what's up? What, what, what's going on? And he said, this is life. Dark, unsure, uncertain. And you can sit here and not become a man, or you can walk towards it. And we all said, Hunter, you've probably drank too much. But he stood up. And he said, no, no, I am seriously, be seriously, I am seriously right now. He said, this is how I want to live my life. 
I want to sprint towards life. And so he said, you assholes, keep off your flashlights. And then he sprinted. He sprinted as fast as he could for a long time. And then we hear it. Thud! Ah, shit! Uh, He had ran directly off the road and into a tree and then fell into a giant pile of thorns. And the whole time we were walking him back, he just kept saying, that's life, that's life. Life is hard. I know I'm telling that story to nobody right now, but any excuse to tell it. So I just got back to the campsite and something got into my food. On top of that, there is a hole in the bottom of my water jug. So that's where we're at. Hey friends, I found the story I want to write about. It involves a protagonist who's a little bit lonely. I don't know, I've always been taught you write what you feel. You write what you feel or you write something that doesn't mean anything. And I think, honestly, if I can somehow isolate fear with my protagonist. I think I'll have the story I'm looking for. A character with only his own thoughts to believe in. That's what I'm looking for. Fuck, I've never been able to get inspired in the daytime. I always get sidetracked and watch TV. Well, I think that fits my theory about creativity. It'll come at night. So, until then, I'll just wait. steps since about nine o'clock. We haven't stopped. I can't leave. This has to be some sick joke. At this point I'm just I'm I'm talking just to not hear silence. Disregard any and all bullshit I speak about. Okay I might tell a story, I might create a story, I might sing a fucking nursery rhyme, I don't, I don't know, I might talk even though I don't know what I'm fucking saying. I know my sensitivity to noise is heightened out here, but I heard something.
Hello? Is anyone there? Stop it! Oh my god! <laughs> What the fuck? I'm not going back. Gosh. I'm not going back. I don't care. I don't care. I'm not going back. I'm not going back. At this point, I want to run into somebody. I want to know what I'm fucking running from! I've been walking for two or three hours now. I I haven't seen a road or a house or heard a car. Everything is the same. Where am I? I'm done. There's a cabin, there's a cabin, there's a cabin.
is this place? Is this a Bible? Creepiest place I've ever seen. Six chairs in a perfect circle. Is anyone there? I'm gonna die here. Be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened and do not be dismayed for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. In the beginning, there was nothing, and Jephthah the Savior worshipped it holy. He prayed to nothing, for nothing to return eternally. We pursue daily his acceptance and aspire to one day become nothing as he did. Yep, I'm back at the campsite. <laughs> Why am I here? One time I ate gas station sushi. Man, do I make good decisions. It's like I run a fucking irresponsibility brothel. I, I cannot leave. She knows where I am by GPS. I cannot fucking leave. If I die, I die. Everybody does. Everybody that ever existed before 150 years ago, they all did it. It's one, it's one of the only things that we have in common. We're not all white. We're not all black, we're not all tall, we're not all short. But we all die. It's 
Somehow that's comforting. <laughs> Michaela, where are you? There's something here. I haven't seen it, but there's something here. I can't leave. I just have to wait it out. Are you fucking kidding me? What should I do, Mr. Red Dot? When I was a little kid, my best friend was a, a pitchback. You know the netting that, that throws the balls back to you? His name was Gus. Gus was such an asshole. He always tried to peg me with baseballs. <laughs> that was funny. That was funny. Don't just, don't just sit there, okay? Laugh at me! I'm sorry I raised my voice. You're just so passive. So I am sorry. Do you accept my apology? Do you accept my apology? If you're not gonna talk to me, then I'm gonna fucking kill you. <laughs> My first word was ball. I don't even remember when I started playing baseball, but I played it all my life, all through high school. I was a pitcher. In high school, we made it to the semifinals. I'm one pitch away from making it to the finals. It's a man on second and third, and what do I do? I throw a fastball right down the middle. Three run home run. I know it seems stupid but in high school, baseball was life. So the whole rest of the hour and a half, all these people started coming up to me, telling me what a good job I did and how lucky this batter was that he hit a home run. I just wanted to be alone. Looking back on that day right now, it seems like a utopia. Best day of my life. I guess I'll watch this. At least give me something to do. So Clayton, we hope you're having an amazing trip and I hope you're finding all of the things you're searching for. And we decided that after our day of interviews, there was something we wanted to tell you. Michaela's pregnant. What? No, I am not my pregnant. my child. Hunter, take this seriously. Okay. <sighs> we love you. Is that good? Yeah, okay. that's it. That's it, we love you. And uh, I've never met someone as dedicated to making me laugh as you are. Well, I, I wouldn't, don't lie to him. I mean, he tries really hard and that's what really counts. No, it's true, you do, you make me laugh. You definitely try and that is so admirable. But anyway, <laughs> we know you can come back with something great. Um, we know how capable you are and we hope you do, um, but. We just want you to come home. And to shave your fucking depression beard. Hunter. <laughs> yeah. And one more thing. I just want this to be clear. All right, I would be perfectly happy with you and me just bullshitting through life if that was the only way to be us. I love you. It's night four. 
wish I wasn't here. I wish I could go home. But I guess if I didn't feel this way, then the experiment would be a failure, right? That has been happening all night. They're just marching in a giant circle. They, they never stop. They're never close enough to be seen. It's fucking cruel. Oh, I'm, just, I'm just trying to keep my mind busy, you know? I'm scared to let my mind become idle because it might not be mine again. I was wrong though. About fear. My new thoughts. Mr. Red Dot. My new thoughts are the fear is actually based in the mind. I mean, what is scarier than knowing your sanity is actually crumbling? I mean, it's scarier than any monster could ever be because if you are chased by a monster, at least you can run. But whenever you are insane, you have nothing to believe in but your own thoughts. And they're lies. They're lies, they're not even real. So you're more than alone. The next obvious sound I hear, I'm gonna sprint straight towards it. I don't care anymore. Where are you? Stop it. finish the story. I know how. All the words are blurry. It's like my eyes won't uncross. <laughs> but nothing, nothing is there. Nothing is there, I know that. But they, they, that, that's all that they want. They just want me to finish the story. And I want to, I just, I don't know. I don't know if I'm ready. <laughs> Be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened and do not be dismayed. But they wanted me. They wanted me. think it would be that bad to die in your sleep. No anticipation. 
No fear. Just the end. <gasps> Shit! Good. We'll find goodwill. But evil will come to him who searches for it. I pray I'll die in my sleep tonight. Where are you? Michaela? Michaela? I'm sorry, Dad. I could have learned so much from you. You're a fucking superhero, and I hope you know that. Michaela, I'm so sorry, Michaela. I didn't want to... <sighs> my mind is my own. My mind is my own! My mind is my own. My mind is my own. My mind is my own. Just 
leave me alone! Here I was trying to write something dark, but I wasn't embracing it. But here it is. I hope they'll be pleased. My mind is my own. My mind is my own. My mind is my own. What happened here today, and what will happen to me tonight, only those who pursue daily will know. My mind is my own. My mind is my own. My mind is my only truth. Only truth. 1127. Only truth. 1127. Just show yourself. What do you look like? Just show yourself. Show yourself to me. I looked for you. Clayton! Clayton! Clayton, where are you? <laughs> you want us to finish it. Mac, I promise. We found the cabin. Did he say that, um, the third night? We still didn't find any sign of him. Your mind is just a fragile place. And you don't have anyone. It's gonna be okay. I want one thing to be said. He succeeded. He created something. It wasn't worth it. But his recordings said something. He thought his project was about loneliness. It wasn't. Can you say it? Please. It was the first night I ever met him. <laughs> he tried to ask me out, and after many failed attempts, he finally said, we live in a messed up world full of messed up people. So why take the chance and go through it alone? said yes. I don't want to say it, but he's gone. He's gone. And I was here the whole time. But it's too
too much silence a bad thing? Are the mundane relationships that we keep the only things weaving us to sanity? Yeah. 